SCP-3007, World of Two Artists. If you've been following this what series up to this entail? point, you know that dead worlds are a common enough theme in SCP. The Foundation stumbles onto an alternate dimension or reality, sees that yeah. something catastrophic happened, and slowly discovers what led to that point. Obviously, SCP-3007 is based around another such dead world. And while that okay. in itself is not original, the interesting journey is learning about the unique scenario that played out there. 3007 is open to some interpretation, and although I'll present my own, As I encourage you to read it yourself at some point to make your own interpretation. SCP-3007 begins by explaining that it's an info hazard, meaning that its anomalous effect is based around possessing information about it. Okay. Obviously, these are dangerous things to have reports about, so the yeah, article just begins with about a it. mimetic kill agent to weed out any unauthorized users. 3007 is broken up into a few different concepts, the first of which is a reoccurring hallucinogenic phenomenon that affects a handful of people around the world at any given time. There doesn't seem to be any pattern connecting these individuals, and new cases continue to spontaneously appear despite the Foundation's efforts. Anyone detected by the Foundation that is affected by this phenomenon are to be terminated immediately, as amnestics Oof. have no effect on these individuals, and they represent a grave threat, as we'll see. So, it causes these people to hallucinate, randomly at an average of four times per day, typically between 50 to 80 minutes at a time. That's rather inconvenient, but it's what they hallucinate that's really important. Each person affected by this claims that during these periods, they are transported to an alternate world, and descriptions of this world gleamed from different subjects matches up pretty closely. While it doesn't seem like this is any place on Earth, and they all seem to be hallucinating the same place, no one has met a fellow subject within the world. While hallucinating this world, individuals can physically move around within it as normal, and their senses of sight, smell, and taste are indistinguishable from our normal reality. Are they transported to they the dead world? They do retain their senses of hearing and touch in our reality, however, allowing them to continue communicating while hallucinating. Since there's a bit more than just a hallucination going on here, it turns out that any injuries suffered while traversing this alternate world will be reflected on the person in our reality. Die in the game, this die in real life. If you die in the dream, you die in real life. And so far, <laughs> there have been a number of subjects who have died from high altitude impacts. Additionally, any sounds originating from this alternate world can be heard within a couple meters of an affected individual, lending further credence to its actual oh. existence. Oh, that's interesting. The first interesting. interview log comes from a 68-year-old South Korean female, who is the first recorded subject to be affected by SCP-3007. The woman explains that, at first, her visions of this place were blurry, like a dream, and all she could tell was that she was seeing the same place each time. Now, she can see it in perfect clarity, and in her most recent hallucination, she was standing on some type of narrow suspension bridge. She could tell it was daytime, but the sunlight seemed as if it was obscured by smoke, and there was a horrible stench in the air, like garbage and rotting meat. Her memories of this vision are quite vivid, and she gags just from recalling the smell. All around her were the ruins of something akin to a city, but the buildings were more like giant trees than skyscrapers. From where she was, she had to crane her neck to see the tops of the ones still standing, but most of them had fallen or been reduced to rubble. Mm -hmm. She went to the edge of the bridge and looked down, but the ground was out of view, as if the city just continued downwards into darkness. She saw thousands of other bridges like the one she was on, linking together the buildings, but many of them were also in ruins. Every structure she saw was made of a smooth, metallic material, white as bone. She didn't see anything alive, animal or plant, the entire city dead and barren. In the distance, however, she spotted a tall black pillar, thicker than any of the other buildings, and she began walking towards it. 
The woman begins to cry as she recounts her walk and how she came across a number of scattered corpses. The bodies seem dried up and old, and she thinks they might have been people, but their bodies were twisted and wrong. She saw one man's corpse whose bones bulged out in parts and erupted out of his skin. I wonder what happened. There was a child's corpse next to him, its head melted like wax. Oh. Some of the corpses were joined together and pressed into cubes. The interview concludes at this point as the woman continues to ramble into hysteria. The tall black pillar is seen consistently by every subject affected by 3007, always visible from when they first start their hallucination. The leading researcher for 3007 believed it to be especially significant, and so encouraged subjects to go to it and explore it. Most subjects were not very cooperative, but a 23-year-old male with an exceptional memory volunteered to check it out so as to help understand and treat his condition. His vision starts with him being about an hour walk away from the Hopefully pillar, he's still safe. commenting while walking. The buildings in the ruined city are kilometers high, made of metal, and crisscrossed with countless bridges. He accidentally steps on a corpse's leg, and also notes the horrific smell. He says that based on the smell, there are likely a lot more corpses in each of the buildings, so he prefers to stay outside. He soon comes across a crashed fighter jet with six wings, a corpse in the cockpit split six down the middle. Six wings. No one else has seen aircrafts, which increase in number as he moves closer to the pillar. The smell also grows stronger. Finally, he reaches the base of the pillar, seeing that it's a cylinder, perhaps more than 40 meters thick. There are some colorful, decorative patches on it, along with some stairs leading to the top wrapped around it. The smell is nearly overwhelming at this point, as the subject sees a massive pile of countless corpses squished together around the bottom of the pillar. Ugh. The doctor urges him to go to the stairs, this definitely but the man the refuses cause, then. to go through the corpses to get to them. After some convincing, yeah, who would? he finally agrees, and squishes oh, well, his way he across would. the pile. He is eager now to climb the stairs and get away from the bodies, but notes that the people seemed like they were climbing over each other to get to the pillar before dying. A number oh. of their faces are all staring upwards towards the top of the pillar. Okay. Salvation? As the man ascends the pillar, he remarks to the doctor oh, the that this entire salvation. place makes him feel uneasy, as he can now see that what happened to this city was not normal. The buildings weren't just blown up or reduced to rubble, but it looks like they were reformed and squashed, like a kid playing with clay or wires. According to him, whatever happened here, it didn't the just artists? destroy. It Maybe? played with this place, including the people. He comes across a large mural painted onto the side of the pillar near the staircase, and can see a few more, as if the pillar was designed to show the paintings off. The paintings seem to show off a story, which I'll get to in a minute. Thanks to the exceptional memory of the subject, he memorizes the various paintings and draws them after returning from the hallucination. Damn, he incredible actually. He continues to actually. climb the staircase, and instead of getting away from the stench, it is actually growing stronger. At the top oh. of the pillar, the man screams out and throws up, claiming to see a massive dried corpse with a face ten times larger than normal, covered in arms and missing large chunks. There's also a final painting on top of the pillar. His hallucination ends at this point, and he recreates the paintings he saw. Okay. Apologies to those listening to the audio-only version of this episode, but this section might not come across the same without seeing the paintings. <laughs> this is the section well, of SCP-3007 yeah. that is open to interpretation. Since you have the same information that I do at this point, and can see the images yourself, you can decide for yourself what happened here, but I'll give it a shot. Alrighty. There is a planet depicted, with presumably a smaller moon near it, which is likely the planet that these subjects have been hallucinating. Yeah. We see the six-winged aircrafts that the man saw. Oh, that's what it looks like. Okay. Pillar, and then a few humanoid individuals clothed in white and drawn with red skin. 
We then see a number of these red individuals, clearly happy, playing with butterflies, a cat, a camera, and a sword. Below them, a blue individual looking up and seemingly extending part of itself upwards. In the background, these parts of the blue individual coalesce into white gears. The objects that the red individuals are holding are also blue, signifying that they are connected that to the blue they... entity. Yeah, the blue it's one created that the them. The blue entity is some sort of deity that gifted the people of this planet yeah. with technology or knowledge of technology. The three in white are perhaps the rulers of this civilization. In the second painting, we see a cloud of red erupting out of a cracked planet, overtaking two of the six winged planes, which now appear frayed. On the cracked planet, with the peaceful world in the background, we see individuals have landed on the surface, but one seems to be crying or in pain, another is standing defiant against something. We then see a number of humanoid figures with red strands coming from their heads and touching the surface of the cracked planet. Whatever affected the peaceful Aliens. planet came from their people exploring this other nearby planet. The next painting shows the once peaceful planet, which before was blue, Shattered. now fully red and torn apart. Mm -hmm. The infection that they encountered sort of infection, on the other yeah. planet and presumably unleashed had made it back to their home. The people are in agony, crying out in pain. Red, grotesque monsters vomit oh. out more of the red substance, and the blue entity comforts and seems to be crying onto one of the white-robed individuals, who one is of the also leaders. infected. Oh no, A line dude. of people approach the blue entity, who is beginning to be covered in the red substance. A light, almost like a sunset, slowly fades out until there is only the blue entity surrounded by red. The blue entity is much smaller now, surrounded by red and black. Less power. It is being pulled towards a red triangle, and below it, red strands leading into red individuals. The final painting, the one that was at the top of the pillar underneath the massive corpse, shows a red wisp landing on a blue and green planet that sure looks like Earth. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> that, uh, that that's not good. It seems that had their own protective deity who cared about them. And, and maybe the corpse on top of the security. the the corpse on top of the pillar was maybe the the deity here. All was well until the people of that planet eventually traveled to another nearby planet, and yeah, the aliens took over. Bad. This infection made its way back to the home planet and tore it apart. Although what exactly it was is ultimately left to our imagination. Zombie the virus. The deity tried to stop it and save the people. And it's possible that it's but also got some, infected somehow, but ultimately the planet was left very dead. Yeah. Further bewildering, the last surviving people that managed to draw the paintings on the pillar knew about our planet, and signaled that this infection had made its way to us. There's a lot of questions left that I really don't have an answer for. At the start, the article informed us that SCP-3007 was an info hazard and that merely knowing about it was the problem. Yeah. Presumably, knowledge of this infection was what destroyed the other planet, and that the reason these people in our world are spontaneously having these visions is because of this infection reaching our planet. But why us? Did the other people have visions of some other dead world? How did they know that our world had been infected? Will the fact that we have an SCP Foundation mean that it will be much harder for this infection to spread across our planet? It's perfectly possible that the dreams are actually being caused by whatever is responsible for the infection, as a means of spreading information about itself. But if it's capable of causing dreams like that, there has to be a more efficient way of spreading itself among a populace. Certainly. The fact that a person can die if they die during these hallucinations lends an even greater quality to the infection's power. Ultimately, like I said, you'll have to make up your own mind about what exactly is going on here, and what will happen in the future with 3007. I think it's very likely, though, that the infection is being caused by a sapient entity, possibly a deity itself. Refer back to the title of this SCP, World of Two Artists. Yeah. Perhaps both the blue deity the and the like red deity see themselves as artists of creation, 
but mm -hmm. one was significantly more powerful and more twisted. SCP-3007 is definitely not your standard dead world scenario, and the addition of the really impressive paintings lend it a hauntingly beautiful quality, not yeah. often seen among SCPs. All individuals confirmed as SCP-3007-2 are to be terminated immediately. Well, they did say that there is no cure. Unaffected civilians who have acquired knowledge of SCP-3007-3 are to be administered Class A amnestics. Uh, dash 3. Personnel demonstrating reluctance or non-cooperation in the enactment of the above procedures are to be amnestized uh, and transferred immediately, as containment breach of SCP-3007 will likely result in an XK-class end-of-the-world scenario. I mean, we did see what happened to the other world, so... That is uh, warranted. And like that last picture at the end there is extremely ominous. That just straight up suggests that it's already here. Although like the people in that world ended up becoming monsters kind of like morphing into those things, whatever they were. Uh, let me let me go back and take a look at that right here. Yeah, this uh, this looks like it comes out of that one like flesh eating cult that's in the SCP universe, but the people who were supposedly affected in our world are just having these hallucinations. Maybe that's just the starting point. Maybe all of these people got infected because they learned about it. Once again, it's really just up in the air and however you want to make the story right. And I think this one is fantastic. I, I actually really love this story. There's not like too many missing bits of information. There's just enough there for you to create your own interpretation. It's certainly a sad tale, that's for sure. I can only assume that the deity uh, ended up perishing on top of that giant black tower. I don't really know what that tower was for, what that function is. Potentially, seeing as how everybody wanted to get towards it, that could have been like some sort of way to escape that world which perhaps a few of the people from that world were able to, to utilize, but uh, definitely the corpse on top is the, the deity who unfortunately passed away. Or, you know, once again, I could just be reading into this incorrectly, although there isn't really a correct or incorrect way, I suppose. But yeah, once again, thank you so much to the Exploring Series for teaching us about this SCP. I hope you guys enjoyed that reaction, and I'll catch you in the next one.